Hi, this is Jennifer Burke of IntelliCraft Research, and I've put together a brief presentation on how to properly use photos, the basics of stock photos, copyright, and the Creative Commons, or what you didn't even know you needed to know and you didn't have time to go and find out. First, a disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer, and this is not legal advice. If you're concerned about copyright, trademark, or other intellectual property matters where you need legal protection or advice, please consult a lawyer, especially one versed in intellectual property law. There are two different kinds of stock images. Royalty-free are the most common. There's a near unlimited use if you follow the licensing rules and pay the certain fees. Usually you can use an image as often as you like and as long as you like in different projects. However, know that there are some restrictions if you are creating something with that image that you will then resell, as if on a t-shirt, a mug, or a book. Rights managed. More restrictions and limitations, including how long you can use it, where, including the geography, possible industries that may be allowed or prohibited. Remember that royalty-free doesn't mean free. You still have to pay for something. You're buying the licensing right, a fee, the right to use the image a multiple number of times, maybe even unlimited, and not have to pay each time you use it, known as a royalty. You're also paying the stock photo houses to have taken all of the necessary legal protections and secured the proper releases for that photo so that you're covered and protected if you've purchased the rights for a photo from them. They shoulder the blame if something goes wrong not you. Also know that generally the costs from a stock photo house are based on file size. So file size matters. Generally small, meaning smaller number of pixels and a lower resolution, example a half megapixel photo, 800 by 600 pixels, cost less money. They're usually also perfectly fine for most web use in a PDF or a document or an email. You need larger photos with greater pixel and higher resolution for printed materials and advertising, brochures, magazine articles, billboards, packaging, high-res videos, and large-scale presentations. Larger file sizes cost more money, so generally buy the smallest you can afford and use for basic web use and buy the biggest, best image you can afford for everything else. There are a lot of different stock sources you can find on the web. These are the names of some of the largest and most reputable firms, the ones who if you buy or license an image from them, you know you're going to be protected and covered in terms of its use. There are also some alternate sites. Free Digital Photos is great for photographers who want to share their images and see them widely used, and you can usually use the small file for free, but you must publish a credit or attribution to the creator as specified on the site in their format and with the appropriate links back to that image. If you don't want to or can't publish a credit, for example you're using the image in a newsletter and you don't want to have to include the various links, then you can buy the image rights. PhotoPen uses free photos and searches Flickr for Creative Commons licensed photos. There's a difference between commercial use and personal use for a number of the different stock photo sites. Generally speaking, for all business purposes, you're looking for a commercial license. Commercial, meaning promotional, endorsement, advertising, merchandising purposes, anything that you're using on a company website, blog, brochure, advertising presentation, or product. Basically, when in doubt, look for and use a commercial license. And yes, that means everything needs a license. Your Facebook business page, your Twitter header and background, your YouTube channel and header, your blog, your emails, your annual reports, and yes, even your internal presentations. Again, when in doubt, pay the little bit of money and find a licensed photo. Or make sure you're getting free clip art from a reputable source. I'm not a copyright expert and I'm not going to pretend to be one on the internet, but I am going to point you in the direction of some copyright basics. One of the best places to go 
is the United States Copyright Office at copyright.gov. The first thing to know is that copyright exists even if you never formally apply for it through the United States Copyright Office. It exists as soon as you've created something. You wrote an article and now it's on your website, it's copyrighted. You take a picture, it's copyrighted. You write a poem, it's copyrighted. And only you can determine what rights you give away or not to someone else for something that you've created. Unless, of course, it's something you created while working for an employer or someone else. That's work for hire and a different matter. Need more information? See the FAQ at the Copyright Office. Remember, copyright.gov. But for now, assume that everything you find on the internet is copyrighted by someone, even if you never see the copyright symbol, or a registration symbol, or the trademark symbol. Also, be aware, if someone else designed your website, brochure, newsletter, or email template, and they used images in those materials, make sure that the proper licensing and permissions were received for those images. Have your order numbers, your invoices, your payment receipts, and etc. Because otherwise, you're the one who's liable if they used an image without a permission or a license. The penalties would fall on you. Another great resource to find photos and or creative materials is the Creative Commons license. It's a license that allows a creator of a content to communicate what rights they're reserving and which rights they are waiving for the benefit of others to use those materials, and what restrictions are included and where an image can be used for personal or commercial purposes, and whether or not you have to give attribution or credit. Anyone can use the CC for their images. It's quite common among non-professional photographers and even some pros who aren't selling their pics at agencies and stockhouses. The site has a great tool to help you walk through which of the licensing might be best for you and your own work, and which licenses and or restrictions might be necessary for you to use a work that you find under Creative Commons license. There are a couple of ways to search for Creative Commons licensed photos. One is search.creativecommons.org. The other is here at Flickr, where you can search Flickr by those images that have a Creative Commons license. This is the search page, and I've decided to look for something with a yoga pose and a Creative Commons license attached. So now we're looking at a result that I picked from the general grid of search results for yoga pose. I picked a headstand, something that I don't think I could ever achieve. And down here in the bottom right hand corner where it says Benjamin J. DeLong is the creator and owner of this particular image. If you scroll down on the bottom right hand side of the page where the image is, underneath the creator's information, you'll see a link for some rights reserved. If you click that link, you'll find more information on the particular rights for that particular Creative Commons image. This is the page that shows you the rights that have been chosen by a photographer under a particular CC license. If you follow the additional links on this page, you'll find different information about attributions, credits, and or how you can use a particular photo. On our photo of the yoga pose, if you click the photo itself and then right-click the image, you get a pop-up with, again, a link to the rights reserved and the CC licensing information, as well as links to be able to select a particular image size that you can use based on the rights assigned. This is the download page showing you the different options that this particular photographer has made available. And generally speaking, it'll also tell you if certain sizes are restricted by Creative Commons license. This particular photo is available in all sizes to download. Yay! This is the additional home page for Flickr at flickr.com slash creativecommons. It can also give you some additional information about the different types of licensing and attribution necessary under the different CC rules. 
there are some additional Flickr resources, including the Flickr Commons. This is a place where you can, they are sharing treasures from the world's public photo archives, museums, libraries, historical societies, great resource for historical photos. Flickr is also working with Getty, and some of those for images may be available for purchase, uh, as they would be from any other stock house. So thank you. This is Jennifer Burke, and I'm the Info Hound, president of IntelliCraft Research. Do you need more help? Maybe you need information you didn't even know you needed. You can always email me or contact me at the two websites listed, www.theinfohound.com or intellicraftresearch.com. Thanks. Have a good day.